I'm Troy Kirby with my Edmonds News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. House lawmakers debated in gross second substitute House Bill 1186 concerning juvenile rehabilitation for youth incarcerated to spend half of their sentence back in their community. The bill passed the House 6136, moving on to the Senate for consideration. Too readily in the past, we would institutionalize them, thinking that they needed to be punished uh, or perhaps rehabilitated in that setting. But the research has shown that a much more natural a home community environment uh, eases the youth who have committed offenses, uh, eases their transition uh, back into the community much more successfully. Well, serving as a school resource officer, uh, I had to arrest a young man from my school on a felony. And he went away, served his full term, 14 months in juvenile detention in a facility on the other side of the state. The day he came back to school, he asked to speak to me. We sat out in the commons together, face to face. He said, Deputy Clipper, I've learned my lesson. I want to change my life. Will you help me? And I did. I met him before school every day. We, we ran together and we did PT together and he went on and is now serving a very successful career in the military. Very successful career in the military. Madam Speaker, he served his full term, his full sentence in juvenile detention. And when he came back, he told me, I've learned my lesson. Why we would not have as much hope for these children to be given resources to find a path back home and find a way to thrive on the other side. And that's what this bill gives them. We have taken good care to work with the Department of Children, Youth and Families so that we, for the first time in a long time, address that assessment tool to make sure that it has the equity lens and the best research around brain development and other considerations so that we get it right every time this is considered. Madam Speaker, I get a lot of emails from from individuals in my community and even outside of my community that are very concerned about the balance in our justice system. There's concern, Madam Speaker, that, that unless we do step up and provide these community custody officers with what they need to do their jobs, that we are going to see more tears we're going to see more grieving families, and we're going to start seeing more righteous anger coming from the constituents in our districts that demand that we look out for their safety as well. And I think sometimes part of what we do with this punishment is we say, okay, no, none of us want to do this to our kids. I get that. But maybe they need to learn a little harder lesson. And uh, I think that most of the kids that I've talked to when I go to these uh, um, juvenile detention centers and I've been to them and I talk to the kids, it's not the first time they did anything wrong. They were given lots of breaks and many of them, as I talk to them, get it and they understand why they're there. I'm lucky to not have done anything bad enough to have served any time in jail or anything like that. Uh, mostly minor kid stuff, if you will. But I see a bill like this that is, you know, kids are making mistakes. They're paying back to society. They're doing time. Uh, we adults, if you will, are looking to maybe cut them a little bit of slack um, because of good behavior and, and whatnot. I, I tend to lean towards that. Um, I can't argue with, with the argument on the other side uh, where you do, the, you do the crime, you do the time, you, you owe your debt to society. They're, they're right. They're they're one hundred percent right. I think my point is that one size never fits all. One of the things that um, is is relevant to me is that this this notion that if we if we let them out early, that we're making them available to all these other resources, and that seems to be the only thing that we're talking about. We're making them available to. The streets aren't just there. You could say we're going to put a monitoring bracelet on them. We could say that we're going to provide them some counseling and some other things. The streets come to you when you live on the streets. Also debated by the House was in gross substitute House Bill 1521 concerning state support of warehousing and manufacturing job centers. The bill passed the House 97-0, moving on to the Senate 
for a consideration. A number of cities benefit from this, uh, the passage of this bill, but the two largest entities uh, that have significant warehousing districts are in our district, the, Fort, the city of Auburn and the city of Kent. Uh, Kent has the largest warehousing district uh, on the West Coast and is critical component to uh, our economy moving forward. And so maintaining that warehousing district is, is very important. This bill helps ensure that that warehousing district uh, remains intact. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by My Edmonds News, covering the 2021 legislative session.